I have always wondered how car audio speakers actually measure. How is their response? Is it linear? Is it not? How is their distortion? Does it go up and down? As far as I know, no one actually measures that. So today, I thought I'd take on the challenge with these. These are Polk Audio DB652s. Now, before we go too far into how they measure, let's take a look at the actual drivers themselves. These are the Polk Audio DB652s. They retail for about $99 a pair. You can buy them all over the place like Crutchfield and Amazon, and I'll make sure to leave links in the description so that you can find these particular speakers or look for other ones depending on if these don't fit your needs. Now these are a, a two-way, six and a half inch uh, pair of speakers. They are marine grade rated, meaning that you can use these outdoors. Now if we take a look at the back of these, this is where you're going to find the actual crossover itself. It's right onto the frame. Now it appears like they're doing a first order on the woofer and a second order on the tweeter itself. It does use a single magnet connected to this particular frame. They are rated at handling 100 watts RMS, 300 watts peak power. They use a six and a half inch polypropylene woofer and that's why the 652 is the label. I would imagine that stands for six and a half inch two way. And then it uses a three quarter inch silk dome tweeter. Now let's go ahead and do some testing. For this, I went ahead and put these in a project that I was building for a friend. And if you subscribe, you'll be able to see this project later. But I went ahead and got out my Omni mic and I started with some on axis measurements. I don't even know where to start with this really, but uh, I went ahead and put this on a five point scale to make it a little bit easier to be able to read and see what we're looking at. Uh, typically we'd want everything to be between 90 and 85 decibels and maybe a little above and below that. That would be about plus or minus two and a half to three decibels. This far exceeds that. And we can see the highest peak is right here at 17 kilohertz and that reaches a 95 decibels. Our lowest peak is very interesting because our lowest peak is right here at around 950 hertz and that's 75 decibels. That means that there is a 20 decibel swing from the lowest point to the highest peak. What does that mean for you? Well, that means it's about plus or minus 10 decibels, which is a huge difference and not very good. Now, this could be somewhat forgiven if they were just two uh, peaks just kind of hanging out, but we see another valley right here at seven kilohertz. And the woofer appears to be a first order roll off going on. And so really everything from about 250 hertz yeah, right to about 1200 hertz, you're missing a ton of information inside those speakers. Now you might say, well, some of this can probably be EQ'd and that's gonna be possible, but we'll have to take a look at the off axis to see if it's going to be able to be EQ'd. And my guess is right here, where we're seeing this big dip, is actually going to be showing the crossover point. And this is gonna reinforce my suspicions of what car audio speakers have been doing for a long time. But let's first take a look at the off-axis response to see if I'm right. Let's first take a look at the horizontal off-axis. Now, as we look at the horizontal off-axis, you're gonna notice that both the seven kilohertz and the 950 hertz dip have started to level off. Now, you might think that's a really good thing, but in this particular case, this is actually a really bad thing. Let's first talk about why the seven kilohertz is probably there in the first place. That's most likely caused by diffraction from the tweeter and the housing that they put it in. Uh, most coaxials are probably going to have some of this type of diffraction, but the type of housing that they put it in is actually a really bad shape for diffraction. If you wanna learn a little bit more about that, go ahead and check my link up above. We talk about that diffraction. Now the 950 hertz is actually caused by the crossover and it means that we're out of phase. Now both of these things mean that we can't really EQ those because if we EQ those, uh, when we go off axis, we're gonna start to have really big peaks at both seven kilohertz and that 950 hertz range. And really that 950 right there, that one kilohertz, we're very, very sensitive to. So if we have a big peak there, that's gonna become very problematic. So not much that we can really do without really changing the crossover. And we're actually gonna see this on the vertical. We're gonna go ahead and go up on this because most likely these are gonna be in your kick panels in your door. So you're gonna be going up higher on these. And if you notice, we're starting to get a huge dip in that 950 Hertz range. 
Why is that once again? It's because they are out of phase. This set of speakers could really utilize a new crossover design that could keep these in phase. And this really goes back to what my concern was with using car audio speakers in general, and that's that they don't really care about the phasing issue. They usually just design crossovers using something like an online calculator to determine what they think would best protect the drivers. But you can still protect the drivers and create a crossover in phase, and that would have been much better to utilize. And I find it really interesting that these are considered linear, at least on Crutchfield's website, because with my testing, these are definitely not found to be linear in any way, shape, or form. Let's go ahead and take a look at the distortion. We're gonna take a look at both the red, which is second order distortion, and the purple third order distortion. Although we're gonna pay close attention more to the third order as we are typically more sensitive to the third order harmonics. Now, if we take a look at it in the one kilohertz range, we're about 1% distortion. And this is being played right around 85 decibels, like a normal listening range. And you can see that we're starting to get some major distortion going on from 220 hertz on up. And at the peak of that, that's about one and a half percent distortion. Now, if we increase this to say uh, 95 decibels listening, then uh, things change dramatically. And as we Look at this, this is pretty interesting because we're starting to get this peak now at 250 hertz and that's a 1% distortion that wasn't really being shown in the third order harmonics earlier. It was shown in the second, but not really in the third. And then we also take a look and at that one kilohertz range, we're up uh, closer to one and a half percent distortion or more. And now at the 100 hertz range or 120 hertz or so, we're at almost 4% distortion. So the distortion has really gone up. That means that if you wanna play these really loud, they'd probably be best crossed over lower if you wanna get this distortion taken care of. And once again, because we're having that issue during the crossover region, this shows that we probably need to relook at a different crossover if we're gonna be serious about sound quality with these drivers. Now, this was my first time really measuring any car audio speakers. And honestly, uh, it was a little disappointing for me because they didn't measure well at all as far as linearity goes. Uh, even the distortion was rather disappointing for me. Now, I don't know if this is par for the course for car coaxials or if this is just an offshoot, but it's definitely not something that I would uh, recommend or something that I would expect from a brand like Polk Audio. So really, I got to do some more testing on some more car audio speakers to find out if this is par for the course. Having said that, where do I use these speakers? I would use these in like a boom box or something of that style, uh, something where critical listening really isn't that important. I don't think that I would use these in a vehicle because of those off axis issues that we noticed and even that diffraction issue that we noticed in the testing. Now, if you like this video, I want you to do me a favor, just give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share it with your friends. Now guys, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you like content like this and ring that bell. Otherwise guys, this is Toyd's DIY Audio and I'm out.